Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again. Today we're gonna be taking a look at Razer's new Tartarus Pro gamepad. Now I know we've been doing a lot of Razer reviews recently. They've just been popping out release after release with new and interesting features. So I wanna make sure that we don't miss out on those. Now that being said, Razer does have an extra one of these for me to give away to one of my subscribers. I'll have all the details for you on that giveaway at the end of the video. But I really wanna dive into this and it's new optical analog switches. So with that, let's go ahead and check this thing out. Starting as always with construction and design, the Tartarus Pro, much like the Viper Ultimate we looked at earlier this week, is an updated and enhanced version of its predecessor. As such, the design should be very familiar to anyone who's used a Tartarus gamepad before. They've also got a Mercury White Edition that's going to be coming out in December, so if you're a fan of white peripherals, you may want to hold out for that one. For those of you that might be unfamiliar with the design of the Tartarus, it's a left-handed gamepad that's meant to supplement your keyboard, giving you access to more hotkeys in a more ergonomic package. Now keep in mind, because of this, you will still need a regular keyboard for day-to-day -day use. And that being said, I think the Tartarus works best in combination with a 10 keyless or a 60% keyboard, just to minimize the distance that your hands have to be apart and minimize just overall desk clutter. You can, of course, just move your keyboard out of the way, but if you're playing something like an MMO, for example, having to type on it might be a bit of an inconvenience. The ergonomic design is fairly comfortable to me, but it is worth mentioning that it's not adjustable in any way. I'd say that it's a one-size-fits-most design, but I would have really liked it if there was just a little bit of adjustments that could be made to accommodate different hand sizes. The ergonomics overall are pretty good, just don't plan on dominating with this thing right out of the box because it will take you some time to get used to the layout. I particularly found this true when getting used to the placement and size of the shift and tab keys because they are a 1U key. And the space bar or the 20 key is a little bit weird at first. For the most part, the button placements are pretty natural though, and I really like the contour of the bottom row in particular. Now, I do think overall the learning curve and adjustment difficulty for people playing first person shooters is going to be a lot higher than people playing slower speed games like MMOs. I think the main reason there is because muscle memory plays a huge factor into playing games that require really quick reaction times. And so adapting to that controller when you're running from somebody or trying to make quick movements might be a little bit more difficult for FPS players. So just keep that in mind. It will take some time to get used to. It still does come with the leatherette wrapped padded wrist rest from the older version, although I do think it could be a little bit more pillowy overall. Construction does feel mostly plastic, although it is solidly built and has some weight to it. The Tartarus has 32 programmable buttons and a clicky eight-way directional thumb pad with a clickable tactile scroll wheel. Now this really does give you a plethora of commands that are literally at your fingertips. The Tartarus can be used for all style of games, but personally I think MMO gaming is really where it shines, and I'll explain a little bit more why that is later in the video. Another thing worth mentioning is that for content creators like myself, it's actually a pretty handy macro pad for editing with the scroll wheel and the directional arrow pad and all of those macros right there can be really handy with things like editing in Premiere. Now, like I hinted at at the beginning of the video, the most exciting thing about this keyboard is the inclusion of Razer's new optical analog switches. And if you guys are familiar with something like the Wooting One keyboard, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about here. This means that you can now set how far you have to press a key in order to register a stroke in the computer. Now you can set this anywhere from 1.5 millimeters all the way down to 3.6 millimeters. Similar to Razer's optical switches, these switches work by using an infrared light beam that passes through the switch stem while a sensor measures the depth of the press by how much light makes it through. This lets the mechanical switches function much more dynamically, similar to how a joystick would work on a controller. Another interesting feature they're introducing is that you can also set up dual functions per key, which allow the same key to do two different functions based on how far down you press the key. Now, in my opinion, this feature is a little bit less practical as even the farthest distance possible at these small distances is a super tiny window to accurately hit. Although I could see this being a little bit more useful in an MMO like WoW, where you could bind an ability and simply tap the key or press it all the way to do something different. As an example here, I tested this out in World of 
Warcraft playing on my priest and so I set uh, to tap it down to cast renew and then to fully depress it down to do a bigger heal. So I think something like that might be a good way to use this feature or maybe on a warrior you could have it to where if you just barely tap the key you'll charge and then have your heroic strike as a full depress or something like that uh, just to make the most out of having those keys there. But I think for things like you know, really fast paced games or first person shooters or MOBAs or something like that, it may be tricky to be able to accurately have a difference between like two millimeters, which really is a very minuscule distance. And it would be hard to hit the difference of that in a really high intensity situation. Now I know dynamic actuation points on analog switches are nothing new to the industry, but to see it implemented on a dedicated gaming device with the features and software capabilities from Razer is pretty cool. Now, of course, after seeing these switches on the Tartarus Pro, naturally for me, the first question is, when can we see these on a full-size Razer keyboard? I don't have an answer for you guys on that yet. I don't know if it's going to happen. I think it's probably safe to assume that at some point we may see a keyboard from Razer that has these switches and the dynamic actuation points in it. I think that would be really cool to see, and hopefully they'll make that happen. And these switches are pretty much the same as the new linear optical switches we saw on the new Huntsman TKL. They feel buttery smooth and are super solid. And just so you guys can hear, of course, here is a quick sound test. All of the adjustments and keybinds can be configured in Synapse and saved to one of eight hot swappable profiles, so you can have settings for all the different games that you play. In Synapse, you can set up macros with an unlimited length, and you can of course configure the chroma lighting to go with all your other chroma peripherals. The Tartarus Pro comes in at a hefty price point of $130, which is pretty pricey for something that is a non-essential peripheral. And I really think for a pro version of the Tartarus, some adjustment options to fit people's unique hand sizes would have really gone a long way. That being said, the size does fit most pretty well, and on the positive side, the analog switches perform really well and give you another level of customization and feeling of control in game. The dual function lets you bind twice as many commands per key, and although it is a little bit situational, I can see the Tartarus Pro seriously assisting those who take the time to really get familiar with it. Well, that's it for the review, guys. Like I mentioned, I am giving one of these away to one of my subscribers. All you have to do to be eligible for that, as always, is make sure you're subscribed to this channel and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think about Razer's new gamepad. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a like to show your support. And if you're new here on the channel, I'd love to see you subscribe because I've got a lot more videos like this coming for you in the future. You can also follow me on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming for that giveaway announcement. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.